Hello everybody and welcome to the Clark County Public Library program After School Posse. My name is Miss Amanda and today I'll be reading you a book and showing you a craft that you can make at home. Today we'll be reading So Tall Within, Sojourner Truth's Long Walk Toward Freedom by Gary D. Schmidt, illustrated by Daniel Minter. And today we're reading this with permission from Macmillan Publishers. In slavery time, when hope was a seed waiting to be planted, Isabella lived in a cellar where the windows never let the sun in and the floorboards never kept the water out. She had 10 or 12 brothers and sisters, she couldn't be sure since almost all of them were sold as slaves before which she was old enough to remember. But Mau Mau Bet, her mother, kept them in memory. Sometimes at night she held Isabella and pointed to the skies over New York State. Those are the same stars and that is the same moon that look down upon your brothers and sisters, she whispered, and Isabella looked at those same stars, that same moon, and dreamed. When Isabella was about nine, she was sold for a hundred dollars, along with a flock of sheep. Mau Mau Bet held her one last time, they would always remember to look at those same stars and that same moon, even though they would be ever so far away from each other. Every night after that, Isabella kept her eyes wide open. In slavery time, when happiness was a dream never coming true, Isabella was put to work. Now the war begun, she thought, First, she worked for Mr. Neely, who figured she didn't need shoes in wintertime. Two years later, she worked for Mr. Shriver, who had her carry fish and hoe corn and dig roots and tend herbs and tote gallons of dark molasses. A year and a half after that, she worked for Mr. Dumont, who bragged that Isabella could do a good family's washing in the night and be ready in the morning to go into the field. And she did, night after night, day after day, night after night, day after day, night after night, day after day. But sometimes she looked up at those stars and that moon, and she asked God if he thought it was right. In slavery time, when respect fell as often as, as snow in July, Mr. Dumont ordered Isabella to marry a slave named Thomas. She had five children, James, who died in infancy, Diana, Peter, Elizabeth, and Sophia. At night, under the light of those stars and that moon, she wondered if her children and her children's children would always be slaves too. In slavery time when promises were thin as old smoke, Mr. Dumont swore that if she would do well, he would free Isabella and give her a log cabin to live in by the next summer a year before all the slaves in New York State had to be freed by law. But the summer came and the summer passed. Oh, thought Isabella, I have felt as if I could not live. So that fall, after the work of the harvest was done, she held baby Sophia close and seized freedom with her own hands. Along the road, she came to the house of Isaac and Maria Van Wagner. They welcomed her inside. They promised they would never abandon her. 
They were there when Mr. Dumont found Isabella. You've run away from me, said Mr. Dumont. No, said Isabella, I walked away by daylight. You must go back, he said. Isabella shook her head. I shall take the child, said Mr. Dumont. But Isaac and Maria kept their promise. They paid Mr. Dumont's price for all the work Isabella might have done before she was freed by law. And they paid his price for her baby, and Mr. Dumont left. Isabella asked Isaac and Maria if they were her new masters. Isaac shook his head. He was master to no one, he said, and now Isabella was slave to no one. But in slavery time, broken promises were like leaves on a tree. Mr. Dumont sold Isaac's five <laughs> Mr. Dumont sold Isabella's five-year-old son, Peter, to Mr. Gedney, who sent him down south. Though Isabella could not read or write, she knew that in New York, where they lived, no slave could be sold outside the state's borders. Isabella, on foot and alone, went to the Dumont house and knocked on the door. And when it opened, she said, I'll have my child. Mrs. Dumont shook her head. A fine fuss to make, she said, and closed the door. So Isabella walked to the Gedney house and knocked on the door. I must have my child. Mrs. Gedney told her that Peter had gone to live with her married daughter, to have enough of everything and be treated like a gentleman. But Isabella knew this was a lie. My boy has gone as a slave, and he is too little to go so far from his mother, she said. Mrs. Gedney closed the door. But Isabella thought, I felt so tall within, I felt as if the power of a nation was with me. Isabella traveled miles and miles across New York to Kingston, to tell her story to the grand jury. They saw how tall within she was. They gave her a letter for the sheriff, demanding that Peter be brought home. She took the letter and walked miles and miles back. Peter was already far away in Alabama, but Mr. Gedney read the letter and knew he must obey the court. He went down south to find Peter, while Isabella waited and prayed. God help me get my son. If you were in trouble, as I am, and I could help you, as you can me, think I wouldn't do it? After a few months, Isabella held Peter again, but the Alabama masters had whipped Peter and kicked him and beaten him. He would never really heal. That was slavery. In slavery time, when chains tore families apart like the wind frays a flag, Isabella still looked up at those stars and that moon and hoped her brothers and sisters saw them too. They did. A year after Peter was freed, he and Isabella moved to New York State where she met a woman named Nancy at Zion's church. When they held hands, Isabella said, the bony hardness was so just like mine. But Nancy passed away. Soon afterward, she met her sister Sophia and then her brother Michael, who had been stolen from her long ago. They told her they'd had another sister in the city, but she had just died. Her name had been Nancy. Then Isabella understood that one of the first people she had met in New York City was her own sister, but she had not known it. What is this slavery, wondered Isabella, that it can do such dreadful things? Perhaps that was the moment Isabella knew she had a journey to make under those stars and that moon. It would be a journey, a sojourn, to tell the truth about slavery. 
and maybe then slavery would end forever. More than 15 years later, after, <clears throat> more than 15 years after she walked away from the Dumonts, Isabella changed her name to Sojourner Truth and she began to walk again. In slavery time, when words seemed weaker than whips, Sojourner Truth left New York City with a bundle of clothing on one arm and a basket of food on the other. She began to speak out against slavery to whoever would listen. Not everyone wanted to hear, but she had the lever of truth, so she spoke. In Massachusetts, she said, what a beautiful world this would be when we should see everything right side up. In Ohio, she said that she had seen some of her children sold off into slavery, and when I cried out with a mother's grief, none but Jesus heard. In Indiana, she said, the truth is powerful and will prevail. In slavery time, when tiredness stood at the doorway, Sojourner Truth walked all the way to Wisconsin, D.C., where she met Abraham Lincoln, and she told him he was the best president who had ever taken the seat. In Michigan, she collected food and clothing for the black regiments of free men and former slaves fighting in the Civil War to end slavery. In Virginia, she worked with the Freedmen's Bureau to teach liberated slaves how to live in freedom. When some people wanted to stop her, she warned that if they tried, she would rock the United States like a cradle. And in Washington, D.C., when a streetcar conductor would not pull up for her, she cried, I want to ride, so loudly that the carriage traffic around them stopped and she got on. The conductor threatened to throw her off but she told him that she knew the laws as well as he did, and she stayed on and rode longer than she had planned to make the most of it. For years and years, Sojourner Truth walked and told her story and fought for freedom. And when slavery time finally ended, she felt so tall within. In freedom time, when hope kindled a fire in the dark, and happiness winked over the horizon. Sojourner Truth told an audience in Massachusetts, children, I have come here like the rest of you to hear what I have to say. And what she had to say was plenty. She spoke of women's rights to vote. She spoke about making prisons more humane. She asked the government to offer land to former slaves. She spoke against capital punishment. For almost 15 more years, she walked thousands of miles to Philadelphia and to Brooklyn and to Washington, D.C. and to Kansas and Iowa and Missouri and Wisconsin and Illinois and all over Michigan. And everywhere she went, she spoke of freedom. In freedom time, when respect wanted to show its face and broken promises tried to mend, Sojourner Truth walked to Battle Creek, Michigan, where she lived with her free daughters and free grandchildren, and Sojourner Truth was weary and ready to lay down her lever. In freedom time, when chains broke and words got up to sing, and tiredness, oh tiredness, danced a hallelujah, Sojourner Truth asked herself, what is anybody in the world for? Then she looked up at those same stars and that same moon, and she saw them shining over everyone, over everyone. And she knew that she had been in the world, and she knew what she had been in the world for. I had, to, I had a work to do, she thought. I lost, lost time that I lost being a slave was made up. The end. 
Now I'll show you a craft that you can make at home. For our craft today, I'll be showing you how to make a design like this using some string and paint. You'll need some yarn or string, two black pieces of paper, lots of different colors of acrylic paint, and a paper plate. Start by pouring your paint into the plate like this and then putting your string into the paint. And then make sure that the string is completely covered. After your string is completely covered in paint like this, carefully pull it out and lay it on the black paper. It should look something like this. Then take your other piece of black paper and lay it on top and press them together. Like this. After you've done that, you'll press them together and pull out the string on the bottom like this to make your design. And then pull the two pieces of paper apart. And there you have a design. Thanks for listening. Bye.